Shoes off, pants off. Oh, wait. Oh. I really probably don't need this on, huh? This thing actually screws with your eyeballs when it's on when you're online. Mm. As dumb as it sounds. When you start getting into the chat and then you glance up and this thing's blinding you. Mm -hmm. That used to do that, but you learn how to not look at it. And that's why I wear my hat online too, so that I can look down and it doesn't blind me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe uh maybe we can come up with a theme song for you too. I know plenty of Honey, people. I'm live. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it. You didn't say nothing. It's because I'm getting set up. But... I see there's two people here, but nobody's saying anything yet. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, Canadian witches. Welcome. Good to see you. We're only going to have two people up on panel tonight. Um, me and Martha, my one of my mods from my dog training group. We're going to do... A, we're going to try, see how this works, and um, see if we can make a go of doing some dog training lessons, whatever. Oh, are you a ghost fan? I'll show you this. Hold on. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a fan? My best friend got me into them. We went and saw them in Missoula um, three years ago, and they were fantastic. That was with Papa Three. I like him better than the Cardinal. Hey, Cherokee Rebel, welcome. I'm waiting for my co-host to get here. And a few other people so we can get started. Thank you, Canadian, appreciate it. Yarn is always a tangled mess, Cherokee. <laughs> I'm hoping Martha can find the chat again. There's Martha. Oh, hang on. I got to give you the link to StreamYards. Copy. This is just for Martha, guys. She's my co-host tonight. Take that. And don't forget to shut your YouTube site off. Thank you, Cherokee. I appreciate it. Am. 
Hello. Hi. It takes a village. <laughs> Waiting for a few more people to show up in the chat before we get started. Okay. So they type and we vocally respond. Yep. Okay. How's the weather there? It was icy and icky and cold when we had when we went over to the in-laws. It's yucky. It's about 22 degrees. Hi, Dave. No, I don't see Dave. Where do you how do you see him? He's um in the chat. Do I go to chat? You yeah, were you, were you flipping between chat before? Did you go to the... I think I did. I think that's what yeah. I did. And the redneck connection there is my husband, when you see him. It's Thank all blank. Live comment. Dave Larson. Everybody, this is Martha. She is one of the mods in my um, Caesar Milan dog training group on Facebook. Hello, everyone. Just going to give it a couple more minutes and see if anybody else shows up. It's new chat, so it might be kind of small tonight. Okay. Whoops, wrong button. Use the same link you, you came in with the first time. Trying to get her used to StreamYard so we can do this. <laughs> Here, I will. Try that again, Martha. I lost my co-host. Hold on a second. I got to ask Ken something. There you are. I'm back. I don't know what happened. You probably hit the red leave studio button on accident. No. Hi, Julie. Oh, no. I hit chat and then it wouldn't let me come back. That's what happened. Oh, I could, okay. see, well, I could see I could see all the chats. Yeah, on a phone if you hit the back button. Yeah, if you hit the back button, it'll take you completely out of StreamYards. I know that the hard way. Oh, well, that may have been what I did after my trying to get back. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So I don't, I'm not sure what I need to do. I, when I, I hit can, chat, I see I the chat. I can it, always read chat to you if people have well, questions. I, it's an X. It's an I X. see the chat. When I hit chat, oh. I go to the, I see the chats, but then I can't get back. Hit, there's an X in the corner. Not the Leave Studio X, but the other X. Got it. I just did it. Okay. Okay. I'm telling you, it takes a village. 
Well, it's it took me a long time to figure all this out, and I still my husband is still helping me out with it. So oh, bless his heart. Mine is worse than me. I've been doing this over a year, and I still forget to mute my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken's been doing this over a year, and he still forgets to mute his YouTube. So, <laughs> your husband is Ken. Yes, my husband is Ken. Oh, wow. Right on. <laughs> hey, Josh, this is this is Susan's stream. <laughs> but you are certainly welcome to hang out. We're going to talk about some dog training tonight. And I'm trying to think kind of how we should start this. I didn't think this through very well. I guess first of all, everybody, this is Martha. She's one, Hello, one of everybody. the she's one of the moderators on my um, Caesar Milan dog training group, and I subscribe to the Caesar Milan method of dog training. I find it to be very humane. He uses a lot of dog psychology. Um, he's he's just excellent with dogs, and I have learned so much from him. And I have learned so much from my group and I just want to be able to share it with more people. So that's part of why I'm doing this. Tonight, I figured we'd start at the beginning, puppy basics. And I guess maybe a way to start would be, maybe, does anybody have any questions? If, do you have a puppy? Do you have questions that you are having trouble with? Um, I don't know. Is it, you know, is there something that you're wondering about that you'd like to maybe get a, an answer to? And if not, we can always talk about some of the things like that Lynn talks about with puppies and which I'd like to cover that stuff too, but So I guess when you get a puppy and you bring it home and it's eight, 10 weeks old and it's oh so cute and you spoil it to death and you think it's too young for discipline. Um, Martha is very good with training. Yes. Yes. I try. I've learned everything I know from watching Caesar Milan, everything. I changed my whole method of training my dogs because of Caesar Milan. And I'm telling you, it has just made such a difference in my puppies and in my puppies when they grow up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I learned from Caesar with my last two puppies, and by the way, I have two Labrador retrievers. One is eight years old. And the other one is 20 months who has been hell on wheels. <laughs> Probably the most, the most challenging dog I've ever had to train. And he is my sixth lab. So over the years I've had, had several, but using Caesar Milan's methods, my last two. And um, I learned about the cuddling and petting and hugging and, and spoiling puppies from Caesar to be just he, what he says is the opposite of that is that that is the one of the worst things we can do when we're trying to raise our puppies and train them is give them all this unrequested affection. Yeah, well, maybe that's not the right word for it. Um, we, we give them affection before we do anything else, before we train, before we teach, before we discipline. And that's just backwards. Absolutely. Keep going with that train of thought. That's good. Well, um, with Riley, we got him at just about 11 weeks old. Um, and shortly after we got him, maybe about 10 days after we got him, we had um, out-of-town guests come in who were just 
crazy in love with him. And <laughs> in the short span of 10 days of what I had been trying to work with Riley, they undid. I mean, they just couldn't resist it. It was very hard to encourage them to not um, pick him up so much and not let him on the furniture. I don't let my dogs on the furniture because I've got too many allergy uh, prone family members that come over and keeping them off the furniture is just a way that I can control that a little bit better. And my dogs have never been allowed on the furniture. None of them have. They don't even try to get on the furniture. None of them I have ever tried it. to get on the furniture. So, um, you know, I had to just undo everything that happened while they were here for the week and a half. And, um, but, but he did, but he's still, he's still a, a challenge at 20 months. He's much better over the months as he's grown and, and learned his discipline, learned to stay out of the kitchen. He's learned to sit and stay um, when I'm in the kitchen, when I'm preparing their food. He's very good with eating. And he started out to be kind of aggressive. He wanted all the food, mm -hmm. his brother's food. And they, would, they got into some tiffs over food until I remembered my Caesar training and stepped in and stepped up. And now he's just excellent with it. Good boy. He's a good boy. Right on. Well, we have a question that's not necessarily puppy related, but I think it's something that starts in puppyhood. And that is um, Cherokee has wanted to know about separation anxiety. And that's not something, that's something I'm actually struggling with, with my dogs. And I've been trying all sorts of things and so far nothing is really working. So I don't know. Do you know anything about that? Well, I, I've never had to deal with separation anxiety with my dogs. Um, we, we kennel trained Riley early and he stayed in the kennel when we left and as far as I know, there, there weren't any issues, but he outgrew his kennel quickly. And um, so we, we just did a little practice with leaving the house for a few minutes and coming back in to see how his behavior was. And overall, he was pretty good. He didn't seem to mind that we were gone, but when we were gone, he would try and get into things. So we had to learn to put things away, put things up restrict him to a certain location. But now every, we, you know, we leave, we left yesterday uh, or Christmas day. Um, let's see, we left at about three o'clock in the afternoon and we didn't get home till maybe nine 30 or so. And for maybe this is probably the fifth or sixth long separation that we've done with him over the last couple of months in a row that he has not gotten into anything. Well, just lays yeah. So I think the practice of leaving for a few minutes and then extending that, which is what we did, you know, we'd go for a walk and come back or we'd go down to the mailbox and come back. And then we might um, go for a longer walk and, or maybe go for a drive and come back, but we extended our time away and I think he learned that we would be coming back. And time doesn't seem to be a concept with dogs. They were always at the door when we came home. And I, my neighbors who live fairly close, they can hear them if they're barking or doing anything bad. Um, yeah. They'll let us know if, if there's problems. Yeah. Well, I've seen Caesar do um, the short amount of time separated and then a little bit longer time and extending it. I've seen him do that on a couple of episodes. And so it sounds like you, you were doing exactly the right thing. Well, I, it worked for me. I learned that from Caesar and I, I tried it with, with Riley and with Finnegan, my older dog. And um, it worked. You know, maybe I will have to start doing some of that kind of work with these guys. Yeah. 
And and maybe I'm sure you've already tried the taking him for a walk before you leave somewhere. Try to fit that in before you leave. I I play with him out in the yard. I don't I don't get around as well as I would like to, so I don't get in as many walks as I should. So well, even something that'll help him burn some energy, you know, throw yeah. the ball or whatever they like to do. Yep. Cherokee says the troubled one broke out of her kennel and jerked to out is putting a dog in the bathroom wrong. I think if your bathroom is safe, if it's dog proof and your dog isn't in there just freaking out the whole time, I don't see anything wrong with it. A lot of people can find their dogs to one room while they're gone just to keep things cool, you know? I don't see that any different than a kennel myself. Exactly. It's just, it's just a bigger kennel. Yeah. But make sure you puppy puppy dog proof it. You know, whatever age your dog is, make sure that there's nothing in there that he can get hurt on or that he can damage. And bathrooms and are full of poisons and, you know, even a dog drinking shampoo or, you know, something like that could make them very sick. So mm -hmm. you've got to be very vigilant about keeping all of that stuff out of their reach. Yep. Chemicals under the sink. So you would have, else. you would have to basically puppy proof the room, but it might be a good option for you if that's what you, what you want to do. I think I think that's a good idea, and and maybe even if if he if he's able to stay, that rather than closing a door, or putting a gate, you know, one of those, um, a baby gate, it's like a baby gate, yeah, the spring loaded thing that you tighten. Yep. And even two of them, if he's able to jump that, I I had a friend who put one on top of the other and made it like a screen door, if you will, that they could see through but couldn't get out. Yeah, and that might help some of the separation anxiety, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that might, that might be a real good option, Cherokee. But you definitely, before you go somewhere, you need to tire your dog out. You need to take them for a nice long walk or play with them a bunch in the yard. And then... When you leave, give them something to do. Um, a Kong stuffed with peanut butter and frozen will keep them busy for hours. That's um, a great idea. You know, you can, you know, some people like to do like raw bones. Um, a bone will keep a dog busy forever if it tastes good and they like it, you know. They bulldoze over both the gates. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, close, I guess close the door. <laughs> what do they what do they do when they're demonst when they're showing their separation anxiety? What kinds of behaviors do they do they portray? Because that kind of tells you a little bit of what kinds of things you can do to work with them, too. Or if you need a professional, because we're not professionals. At least I'm not. I, you know. I'm not either. I'm not a professional. Yep. Kong oatmeal, peanut butter, and honey. That would, a dog would definitely go for that. Oh, for sure. What oh. kind of dog do you have, Cherokee? What's that? I was asking Cherokee Rebel what kind of dog she has. Oh. Cherokee, did you catch that question? What kind of dog do you have? Yeah. 
Oh, good. I'm glad, Donna. With the crying, that's something that even with my own dogs, I've, I've been able to help with the crying and the barking. Um, I would go outside and shut the door. They would be inside and they'd immediately start barking. I'd open the door and say, shush. And then I'd shut the door. One chocolate lab, one golden bulldog. Okay. And then I'd wait a, another you know, minute or so. And, or if they started barking again, I'd open the door and say, shush. And then I'd close the door. And it took several days of doing this on and off all throughout the day and extending the period of time that I stayed outside and they were inside by themselves to finally where they would get to where they would just lay on the couch and wait for me to come back in the house. If they see me drive away, they're okay. But when I drive up or if I walk up to the house from like a neighbor's house, they bark their brains out. So interesting. we're working. That's interesting. Yeah, it, 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 every dog's different. I know with labs, Cherokee, I have two labs. I have a chocolate and a, and a yellow. And I've also had other, another yellow and I've had two black labs. The one thing that labs, and I'm sure retrievers, I don't know much about bulldogs, but with labs and golden retrievers, they need a lot, a lot of exercise, at yeah. least an hour a day, preferably with some running in there, like on a bike or loose running. I let mine run up in the forest behind our house, um, and they just burn a ton of energy the whole time I'm gone. But I'm, I'm gone probably a little more than than an hour plus the ball throwing that I do here. But if you're not giving your dogs that kind of exercise, the two old, the two lab and golden retrievers, he's, he's, you, I, you I just missed, start doing that. I missed it. He's got a chocolate lab, a golden and a bulldog. Right. Got three dogs. Yes. But all three of those are high energy breeds. I, I don't know about the bulldog. You do. Is that a high energy breed too? The ones that I've been around are. Are they? Well, I sure know about the labs and the retriever. My sister's had probably five retrievers. And exercise, exercise, exercise. Wears them out, tires them out, and calms them down. Yep. So I, I think, Cherokee, you're, you're, you're definitely on the right track thinking putting them in one room. And, and maybe work on the getting a lot more exercise before you for the dogs before you leave. Mm -hmm. And they might not worry so much about you being gone. Oh, they pull your wheelchair. I forgot you're in a wheelchair. That's plots of exercise. Good grief. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that Cherokee, might be part of the separation anxiety right there is that they're part of your team helping you pull your wheelchair and they're so used to being around you that when they're not, they don't know what to do. That That's a good might point, be Susan. the psychology behind it. That's a good point. Is there someone that can walk them for, for you? Yeah. Do you have somebody that can, that can take them out on long walks? Or can you take them on walks yourself with, with your wheelchair? Okay, the golden is the assistance dog. Okay. Because it really sounds like it's it's maybe a combination of just being real attached to you because they're helping you, and then 
maybe needing some more outlet for their energy. Right. Right. I agree with that. Goldens and, and Labradors are really great assistance dogs. I mean, they're used in so many different cases of, of that kind of, of work that they do, but they also need to have exercise yes. somewhere. You know, somebody needs to take them or, you know, like, like Susan said, you can have them pull your wheelchair if that's possible where you are but they need to burn some energy and that'll tire them and make them calmer when you're gone. Yep. Well, she does one at a time. Okay. Keep it up. Maybe go a little longer. Maybe see if that helps. Can you imagine how fast you'd go if you got all three of them to pull you? <laughs> <laughs> That'd eating, be kind of scary, eating. wouldn't it? <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I just know that my labs are so much better behaved when they have their walks. If For some reason, I can't walk them, like when the weather is really bad. Um, it's been snowing here, and we didn't get to go yesterday. It, the, uh, Riley was driving me crazy. Yep. My dogs, my dogs go out and like Chloe will run laps around the yard for 20, 30 minutes at a time and just burn oh off energy that way. But when it's cold outside, they stay curled up on the couch and she starts to get kind of twitchy. She'll go to the door and then come back and go to the door and come back, but she won't go out because it's too cold. And But they don't, they're not badly behaved or anything. They, she just really wants to go outside you know <laughs> yeah yeah i know riley will go outside but he'll try to get out you know he'll try to go up to the hill behind our house so we've we've had to watch him and and block him from yeah. getting out because we we're, we have kind of open property and he wants to go when he wants to go he wants to go cherokee i'm going to show you something if your dogs like to play hide the treat hold on Oh. This is called a snuffle mat. And what you do is you put treats in between all these little pieces of felt. And I use little tiny, tiny pieces of training treats. And they have to use their noses to dig down into the felt to find the treats. And that'll keep Chloe busy for a half an hour easy. And when she's done, she lays down and takes a nap because it's taxed her brain. Show that again. Oh, did you make that? No, I bought it off Amazon for eight bucks. Oh, wow. I saw, um, what's her name? Ravit, I think. A Ravit, name. yeah. In the in the group, um, right? I think she I think she was the one that got one, and I saw that and went, "Oh yeah, Chloe's gonna love that." I Spike saw one that it, but... I saw one that someone was demonstrating on, on a video a couple of days ago, where you, where the dog picks up these cylinder things and there's a treat underneath it. It's like a big mat. It's got these pegs, almost like maybe inch inch in radius pegs, but maybe two or three inches tall. Uh -huh. And the dog takes those pegs off and there's a treat underneath it in the little cup that the peg sits in. That's awesome. Thought, well, that'd be kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm going to look for that. But that would, that would keep Riley busy for a while. One of my, one of my friends out in Washington had a, um, when she had her service dog, she had, it, it looked like a pop bottle with a stopper in it, but the stopper was really loose and you had to pull the stopper to get a treat out. And so it wasn't like just shaking the treats out. You had to pull the stopper every single time to get a single treat out. And oh. that was the dog busy forever. It was cool. Yeah. 
Well, that's something you should try, um, Cherokee. I think that would be a really good thing to try before you leave, put that out before you leave and get them occupied with it and then just quietly leave. Another yeah. thing that I learned from Caesar too is don't make a big deal about leaving. You know, don't give hugs and kisses goodbye and, you know, sweet talk and all that. Just go. Yep. You know, make sure everything's good and just calmly and assertively just go out the yep. door and close the door. My dogs know when I'm leaving. They, 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 my one dog goes back to the bedroom with my husband. When I leave, the other one stays on the couch. I don't say a word. I just start getting my shoes on and they go to their places. And, and I used to love on them and, Oh, I'll see you later, baby. I love you so much. And they would freak out. <laughs> now that I ignore them, they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's an excitement that generates some excitement that you don't want when you leave. Yep. Yep. The, the, you want to have a, a calm dog when you're leaving, definitely. For sure. And that's part of the tiring them out is the more tired they are, the more calm they are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome, Cherokee. He says his golden came to, to him in Germany. He was supposed, the dog was supposed to go to an airman. He yelled at the dog. Cherokee dropped something. The dog picked it up. He left therapy to lay down and the dog followed him to his room. Oh my gosh. That's called your dog picked you, Cherokee. <laughs> and that's for sure. Oh. Well, Cherokee, does that sound like something the suggestions we've offered that might work for you, might be things you could do, could try and see how they work for you? Cherokee, how do those suggestions sound to you? Something are they something you might be able to try and see if they'll help your dog's separation anxiety? Oh, right on. He was born on the Marine's birthday. Well, I hope some of that stuff works for you and for him. It's always good when the dog is calm. For sure. And we're, I, I'm going to keep doing these chats. I think this is a really good thing. Um, so we can always revisit this if if you're still having troubles or if you want more suggestions, there's always more things to try. That's the great thing about dogs is that if something doesn't work, you try something else. Right. I agree. Oh, Ken wants me to tell you about, um, about when, when I got spike, two things about when I got spike actually. The first one was I went to get him and I wasn't actually going to take him. And he came up to me and lowered his head and rested his head on my tummy and just sat there. And the lady looked at me and said, he's never done that to anybody. And I said, I'm taking him home. <laughs> but How then, sweet is that? But then I got him home and his name was Skip. He would not answer to it for two days. I tried treats. I tried lunch meat. I, 
I tried everything. And I, ac- I was outside working with him and I accidentally slipped and said spike. And he came running right to me. And he's been spike ever since. Oh my gosh. I got to tell you my Riley story. This dog is something else. He's so, so smart. This past summer, I was out in our yard and we have a huge yard area and I've got lots of flowers and plants. And I was out front and back deadheading all my um, um, echinacea and some other stuff that I've, geraniums, uh, everything that I've got out there. And I had piles front and backyard. I, I would move, move along and make piles of stuff. And I was in the backyard and I had made about five or six piles and it was a pretty hot day. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but I was, I was hot. And I must have taken off my glasses and laid them down next to me because they kept falling off of my face and kind of forgot about it. And I got up, went in the house, got some water, came back out on the deck and I'm looking around at all my piles and realizing I didn't have my glasses. And I started looking and looking for my glass. I went out front, I went out all my piles out back. I'm thinking, good grief. And, and Riley, of course, is always with me. He's right at my side. And I'm standing there on the deck and I said, Riley, what did I do with my glasses? And he's looking at me and he runs out to the yard to a pile and he did a little yelp and stayed there at that pile. And I went out there and there were my glasses buried in that pile. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's pretty smart. I don't know how he, don't know how he knew what I was saying. And, and even, I don't even know how he knew that they were there. Wow. It was the uh, most unbelievable thing. I, I, it almost gave me chills, you know, that he knew that. That is cool. And he always knows where his ball is. Even when, no matter if it's missing anywhere, if it's h- hiding under a bed or outside under the shed or what, uh, where I say, Riley, go get your ball. And he, in within minutes typically but sometimes even as long as a half an hour he'll come back with his ball yep we used to have a dog that was very ball obsessed and she probably had 10 balls all over the yard in the house we couldn't find them but she (laughs) knew exactly where they were oh my gosh well i usually just keep a couple of balls around because they're they're just everywhere i just And they're good size balls. They're like big Kong, you know, Kong size balls that are easy to throw. And he, yep. he's very ball obsessed, but he he could find them. It's just amazing. He's a crazy dog. Donna said, I knew once when Marley chose Anthony, I woke up one morning and asked Marley where Anthony was. Anthony had fallen in the bathroom and Marley went straight to the bathroom. Oh my gosh. Dogs are smarter than we give them credit for, I swear. I know. If we could only learn to communicate with them better. Yeah. To understand their, their language. And I like how Caesar says we, we need to read their energy because they read ours. Yep. They definitely do. Oh, I I know if, if if I'm coming in the house and I've got my hands full and I'm frustrated and tired. And my dogs are around my feet because normally they just go to the couch, but they'll get around my feet because I'm in a bad mood and I'll be like, go to the couch and they ignore me. But if I come in and I'm in a good mood and I've got good energy, all I have to do is say couch and they hop right up on the couch and wait for me to come and sit down and pet them. They must sense your mood and want to be with you. Ken just reminded me that Possum, the dog that we had that was ball obsessed, if you told her to bring the blue one, she'd bring the blue one. If you told her to bring the red one, she'd bring the red one. She knew which ball was which. And they say gut dogs are colorblind. It probably is not the color. It's just something about that ball that she recognizes when, when you say the word. Yeah. Riley does it too. He has a green ball and a red ball, and he knows the green ball. Yep. And the root ball. Yeah. Uh, They're just amazing. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Are there other questions?
So I guess I'm going to, I'm going to, since nobody's really speaking up, I'm going to throw some things out there since this was supposed to be about puppy basics. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, something that, that Lynn, another one of my mods suggests is when you get a puppy to every single day, act like you um, are giving it like a mini vet check. Check its paws, look in its ears, open its mouth, check its teeth, give it a rub down. Just touch it all over so that when you have to go to the vet, the dog isn't scared. If you have to clip its nails, the dog doesn't have a problem. You know, do do all those things and just let the dog be touched a lot so that it's used to it. And start that as soon as you get the dog. Oh, I wish I had learned that before I had my puppies. I, I never even knew that and never Me thought too. about it. And I think that is such a great idea. I started that with both of my dogs after Lynn posted it in the group. And oh it's, it's made a big difference in like clipping Spike's nails and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's really helped. Maybe that's something. I mean, I guess it's never too late to start doing that. It might take a little longer, but it would be a good thing to, to start doing. I know Finnegan, my older dog, he comes and lays right down with me when I, when he's got an ear infection, he had a lot of them um, in the past. I, th I think he has a dairy allergy. When I stopped giving him cheese and cheesy milk type treats, he stopped getting ear infections, but I have no problem. When I'm trying to give medicine to Riley, Finnegan will come right over and lay in my lap to get his ears done. Right, you know, on. I'm not doing his ear. So I think that's a good thing to do, and I think it, you can do it when they get older. You don't have to; they don't have to be puppies. Julie, yeah, we're yeah. we're kind of doing a chat on all ages. So if you've got a question on an older dog, please ask. I was going to do puppies, but it just kind of turned into let's just talk about what needs to be talked about. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, both Ken Ken said both of our dogs were abused before we got them. So we've especially I mean Spike was, but he got past his a lot easier than Chloe has. Chloe we're still working with and it's we've had her for two and a half years. So wow. she was really traumatized. Wow. You, you train old dogs the same way you train puppies. You start at the beginning, you start with the basics. All dogs learn to sit the same way. They learn to lay down the same way. You might have to use different techniques, but it's basically the same concepts. You're just, it might take you a little bit longer than it would a puppy. That's all. Because I've, I've, see, Spike is seven, and it's just been in the last year that I've been actively training him. And he's picking it up, and Chloe is three, and she's picking it up like that. So age doesn't really matter. You can teach an old dog new tricks easily. I think you can, too. I'm, t I'm working with, with um, Finnegan right now, who's almost eight. He'll be eight in uh, February. Um, does not bark after whenever anybody walks by or the UPS guy comes. Really, and you know, sometimes you bark at nothing that I can see, and I'm really working with him on that, and he's doing a lot better. So I think you can, yep, train and teach older dogs. I think I think time. training goes all the way through a dog's life. It has to. Mm -hmm. Donna says um, her Yorkie is 15, and he was trained late in life. So there you go. Oh, Ken said we had a success last night. He sneezed and Chloe didn't freak out. She usually runs down the <laughs> hall to me. Oh, my God. So she stayed put when he sneezed right on. That's pretty good. Good. 
Susan, I need to back out of here now. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Sure. No problem. I've enjoyed it myself. We'll do it would, again. Would you want to do this again sometime? Sure. Absolutely. That would be awesome. You have some yeah. awesome things to say. So I well, appreciate I think, um, you. It'd be fun if, if some of the other um, mods would be on too. I, I, I love the ideas that they present. They've helped me tremendously. Yep. I'm going to see if I can finagle some of, into, some of them into doing it. <laughs> Good. Use your wily ways. Yes. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. You bet. Bye-bye now. Bye. What time is it? And it is time for me to go and let Ken take over the computer so that he can do his chat. This was just a short little kind of get to know you and answer some questions. And you guys had some excellent questions, so I appreciate your, your participation. And I would like to do this every week. I think that there's a lot of good things to talk about, and we can all learn a lot. So thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And I'll be in Ken's stream, so I'll see you guys all in a few minutes. Thank you. I enjoyed it too, Julie. Bye-bye.